All right, so we made it, Pat. Let's do this, man. All I'm right, excited. Man. Show me what you got. Let's do it. Woo! Welcome to Ecotech. This is wow. our new headquarters. Wow, we moved here earlier this year. Early this year? Yeah. Man. Officially in March. Wow, incredible, buddy. I can't wait to see. So how big is this building? Well, the building is 88,000 square feet. Wow. We incredible. take up about two-thirds of it. Wow. So we're in about 60,000 square feet. It's huge. Hello. Hi, it's me. All right, so here's the production All right. space. That's where the magic happens. Wow. Holy so, moly. So we got a really we tall ceiling so we can fit a lot of inventory vertically. Really tall, you're talking about 40 feet? Yeah, I think 36 foot clear. So we've got a lot of pallet stages up. Wow, incredible. So what and do you guys do here? So this is where we make radions. So radions come in. We have our SMT line production here. So we build all of our circuit boards. And then we'll generally have about five people running this line. And when we're producing radions, we go from all the separate parts we're taking the boards that we've produced earlier in the, the month and then assembling those into the finished products. They're boxed, serialized, and ready to ship out to customers. Can you guys produce more lights now with a bigger facility at a yeah. faster pace? The newer place, we've been able to basically create a assembly line for every product, whereas before we were a little bit more constrained, so we might have to change over from one product to the next. So, for example, we were building MP40s and MP60s on the same assembly line. Yes. Now they all have their dedicated lines. So it's faster that way because you can have parts just dedicated for that specific size of the top Yeah, of yeah. So part of the production team, they don't need to switch over. And then we really try to keep it so that people are working on different projects each part of the each part of the week. So not everybody's doing the same thing all the time. So what do you guys store here? So these are incoming parts. We've got boxes, power supplies. We've got various injection molded components. All the things that come in from our suppliers, and then we do all of the finished good assembly and SMT assembly, which is circuit board pick and place. Now we'll go through that later on the tour. Okay. And over there, I see the toys. Yeah, we're we're going on a dirt bike ride with Vic and the Worldwide crew. Uh, I'm excited. Tomorrow, can't wait. We've got a lot of employees that really like off roading, which is cool, you know. So here we've got our finished goods. This is the really solid stuff. So you guys can see we've got Penny and Kenny here. They're picking and packing and uh, putting all the orders together for domestic and international shipments. I see FedEx picking up your shipments also. Yeah, yeah. FedEx and UPS, they all deliver and drop off here. So um, when we're sending stuff internationally, it's usually on pallets, sometimes domestically to distributors. Those there. Yeah, those are probably big international orders. The Radeon Gen 5 has the most wide angle, and not only is it a really wide angle spread, but it's flat, it's completely flat. If you look at the, the plots of the light intensity coming out of it, so you get this really even illumination across the entire field of your, your, your aquarium. Yeah. And so, I mean, that gives you more space where you can keep coral. I mean, I think that's the biggest benefit that you guys might see at Worldwide is that all of the space of the aquarium is usable. Yes, when we switched from Gen 4 to Gen 5 and um, at most of the retail stores so far, and we saw a big improvement into the lagoon tank. Mm -hmm. I think we have, I wanna say maybe 13 lights or 14, I'm not sure of the exact number, but when we went from the 4 to the 5, we saw a better blanket and we saw it uh, just just a better pop. It just... That tank is killer, man. Yeah. I, re I really love going there and just walking around the outside. And I mean, people wonder it because your lights are so high up off the water. They're like, how does that work? Very funny you say that. So when we first designed the Worldwide Coral Store, there was two questions people asked me. How are you going to light up the lagoon? Are you going to get 1,000 watt metal highlights? And I said, Radiant. And many people looked at me like I was crazy. Like, there's no way. You're, you're four feet above the aquarium and then you got another 20 inches to the corals. Mm -hmm. They told me it wasn't going to be possible. The same thing with the 1,500 gallon tank. Uh, the 1,500 gallon tank, I want to say, is 10 feet long five feet deep and four feet tall. And then the lights are two feet above the tank. And I think on that tank, because it's SPS, I want to say we throw maybe 20 lights over it, and we cannot even put them at 100%. So, right. so those people that say that you cannot go deep with these lights is just a, it's a total myth, you I, know? I think it's funny, because I mean, the way I look at it, you got your, your light that's putting out a total amount of par, and many times I'll hear, oh, well, you need to have a focus beam to get down to the bottom of the sand bed. But in reality, 
par coming out of the LEDs is, is being refracted from the inner walls of the aquarium. It's bouncing around. At the end of the day, the par is reaching the bottom because the total light in is all going to be reflected and refracted down all the way to the sand bed. Yes. It's whether or not it's concentrated in a specific spot here or there. Yeah. And nobody wants hot spots, even if it's in a of deep tank. Of course not, because any bleach corals and you get some, some yeah. areas are too hot and some are not. So here we've got our Versas, our Vectra L1, L2. It's a high commodity right now. Yeah. <laughs> They've been hard Versus. to come by for the first <laughs> Hard to come by Versa. So we're producing these in higher quantities these days. And uh, this is such a stellar product. The pump is, in, in essence, able to dose like one milliliter or gallons. You want to go 60 gallons a day, you can dose that out of this pump. Yes. Nothing else in the market is able to do that. The really cool part is that it's designed so the motor can operate very slowly or quickly. Most dosing pumps that you see on the market can't change its speed. So there's a lot of software and firmware built into the brain of this thing. And what it allows us to do is measure that volume. So if you want to say, I want to dose 300 milliliters a minute, well, 200 milliliters a minute, you can do that. It's a little louder if you're dosing that much volume. Yes. But if you're only going to dose 200 milliliters over the course of the day, it's rotating so slowly that it's dead silent. Everything that we produce is ground up designed from here with our engineers. We've got 12 engineers on staff, and they're completely designing from the mechanical aspects of the product, the electrical aspects of the product, the firmware, and the app development all happens here. Yes, we've been using your product for a long time and that's one of the reasons because obviously I know you now for a long time and we've been very happy with the customer service you guys provide, with the quality of the product, with the technology you guys are putting into it. You guys are constantly trying to uh, evolve and stuff like that, you know? So it shows you. I'm always thinking of your product as the apple of the saltwater industry type of thing, you know? Hey man, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say I don't love the comparison because no, that's, seriously, that's, no, no, that's a wonderful comparison. I, I'm, that, I'm happy that, that's that it's. That's how I think of you guys. I think of a quality product. I think of you guys put uh, the brand and then the quality of the product first, and then obviously the dollars will follow. But that's not what you guys are after. I always felt that way. We always try to. I, I think of it as Ecotech products. We really don't even look at what other people are doing. We imagine what the ideal product would be for the aquarist, and then we try to build that. All right, so we're, we're watching the MP40 motor assembly here. So we're assembling the MP40 motor into the motor casing, and then we'll install the magnet assembly onto the motor, and then we'll seal that casing with uh, another cover, and then we'll glue that shut. And then the sticker goes on the outside. That motor is then attached to the MP40 driver assembly. We'll test that motor with a tester. We'll box it together with the wet side and all of the other parts and accessories that go into the MP40 box. And then we serialize that, box it up, and it goes over to finished goods. And what are they putting together here? So here we have the Vectras. We've all got right. the Vectra L1, L2, S2, and M2. Okay. And then we move on to the Neros, the Nero 5, and the Nero 3. Okay. Not all assembly lines are running at the same time. Here's our Versa assembly line. We'll build the Versa single packs and the Versa four packs on this line. And then we come into the uh, MP40s. So we've got MP60s there, MP10s, and MP40s. MP40 outsells, I'm sure, the MP10s and MP60s all day long. Yeah, MP40 is, MP40 is our golden child. It was our very first commercial product, and it is still a huge part of our business. For those of you guys that are new in the hobby, there used to be something called an MP20 back in the days. So. Oh, <laughs> you remember that, huh? The MP20 was the bastard child of the MP40. So we wanted to so sell something. All right, all right. So we wanted to sell something cheaper, and we thought, okay, well, we're going to build the MP40. But then before the MP10 came out, we said, let's build something for smaller tanks. So we made a, a driver and a power supply that was less powerful. It was still the same motor, right. still the same wet side, and we could sell it cheaper because we had less expensive components in components. it. So that was alive until the MP10 came out. Yeah, it didn't last long. It was a few years, I remember yeah. correctly. And you could, um, you could upgrade from the MP20 to the MP40. It had a blue driver box. You remember that? Yes, yes. Yeah. The little one with the little knob? Honestly, people really wanted, me to, wanted us to keep selling it because the MP20 could bridge a larger gap. 
yeah. than the MP10. Still can. So a funny question. Have you had anyone in the past year or two to send one for customer service or something like I that? I don't know, man. We can, should go ask them, but I haven't seen one for a that'd while. Be but that'd be well, funny, yeah. Somebody that still has one running or something like that, you know? Let's go find those guys. There you we'll go. we ask them. All right, this is the customer service team. We've got our new guy, T-Rex. Hey, T-Rex, how are you, buddy? What's going on? Brandon over here. Hey, Brandon. Brandon's one of our senior guys. Yeah, what, are you, what are you doing here today? What are you working um, on right now? Shipping, so we're doing the end of the day shipping for to make sure we get everything out for FedEx. So okay. That's what we do safe for the end of the day. And TJ is working on some uh, last second RFS to kind of finish up for them. Vic's got a question for you. That's fine. So when was the last time a customer told you they have a problem with their power head, but their power head happens to be an MP20? MP20. I'll tell you, I've never personally seen an MP20 <laughs> come in, so. Uh, so it hasn't we, happened. I think a couple of weeks ago, we did see one of the original MP40s come in, so that was pretty interesting. Okay, then it's the same generation. Yeah, we were, it was like, kind of weird, because we just had the up and down knob on and no buttons or anything. The little, the little and thing. Are oh, you saying the metal box? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. that was before the MP20. I don't even think I've seen that. One. That was before yeah. so the MP20. I was shocked because like I've been here for quite a bit. And, and it was still running. Yeah. Wow. So do you have an MP20? Uh, we have the boxes. We can go look at them. We have the so, blue boxes. So if any of you guys out there have an MP20, we want to get a hold of it. Contact us at worldwidecoils.com. Send us an email. We're interested on the powerhead. We want to put it into Ecotech Museum. No, we'll sponsor you. If you've got an MP20 out there, we'll replace it with a brand new MP40. If you can prove that it's still working. Only one, only, only one. Only one. First, one. <laughs> first, first guy. come, first serve. <laughs> first come, first serve. You got an MP20, you show us a video that is working, we will send you an MP40 yes, and you send us a working MP20. MP20. <laughs> deal. All right. All right. Sounds good. We got a deal. All right. Thanks, bud. You guys carry a lot of the NIOS products, right? Yeah, we carry the full array of NIOS products. Um, we I love their protein skimmers, the by the way. The skimmers are amazing. Absolutely. They're, they're quiet and they're just really well thought out and well put together. They're Servicing out of them. Italy, am I correct? Uh, Germany. Germany. Germany? Yeah. Germany. Very high quality product, yep. right? They're also coming out with a new version of the torque reactor, and that's okay. a really popular way to filter with different medias, and it's a quick interchange. Uh, For body. different sizes of medias and stuff like that? Yeah, so you can just swap it out. You pull it out of the dock and you can swap the media very easily. Interesting. I want to check one of them off. They also sure. have a salt coming out very soon. You serious? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. All right. And I love their foods. The gold pods, just amazing. What do you here got we're here? coming in for, uh, this is our SMT room. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we have oh, two. Oh, I remember this room in the old building. Yeah. This is all these crazy machines. We have two fully functional SMT lines and a selective solder machine. So you tell me what I'm looking at here. This looks like old film here. What are we looking at, Pat? So these are all the components that we use to place on the circuit boards. And uh, we're creating all of our boards in-house. So we first engineer and design them. And then these machines populate the boards with all the components that we set out. and. As we go through the assembly line process, we place the components onto the board. First, we lay down a layer of solder paste. The components are placed, goes through an oven, then it goes through an optical inspector, and then we take those panels, break them down, program, them, program the panels, and then those panels are brought out to the assembly lines to create the products. Wow, so there's a lot of brain power in here, buddy. Yeah, there's a lot of engineering that goes into the design. So this is really cool. This is the um, circuit board pick and place machine. So here we're picking Ooh. components off of the reels. And as you go in there, you can see this thing is going to be it's so explosive. fast. Why? I noticed that. Is this the that new one? That one's stopped. Here, come check this one out. It's still running. Oh, wow. What? It's so fast. It almost disappears while it's moving. <laughs> what is this, bro? <laughs> So, Pat, do you even know how to work this machine? A little oh, bit. Oh, no. No, I don't. No exactly. one lets me touch these. So, here you can see we're, we're actually assembling Radeon LEDs onto the XR30 cluster. So, as they come out, they, they stop and they move on to the next stage. And here we're going through the oven, and the oven reflows the solder. So, there's different zones for okay. each part of the machine. And as it moves through the process, 
it goes through a cooling step, and then finally it goes through the optical inspector. All right, so here we're gonna look at uh, the actual solder joints of all of the LED clusters, all of the LEDs and the different parts that have been placed onto the board. So this machine looks in real time and will analyze if there's any components that are either the wrong component in the wrong place or in the wrong orientation or if there's just a little defect in the corner of the solder. So here we said, okay, it says that there's a defect. It shows you the 3D uh, array of the part. You know, we can take a look at it and if it all looks good, we'll pass the, the error because it was a false trigger. So Pat, I can't help but to look at all of this. A lot of people are not aware that you guys make the lights here in the United States. Why not try to make them for a lesser value, a cheaper value in China? What's the reason for it? Well, our team is really focused around engineering and manufacturing. And if we were to outsource certain parts of the process, you really lose control over the quality of not only the product, but the quality of the process and the build. And mm -hmm. for us, it's really important that we can control all of the parameters. And in fact, the more technology you bring, the more control you have over it, we have a lot of advantages over some of our competitors with flexibility. If we find a quality problem or if we need to make an engineering change, we can do it on the fly. If you've got all of your products outsourced to a third party manufacturer, that it becomes, becomes a long chain of events to make a correction to something that might you be You have difficult. a good point. So that's the main reason. Well, I yeah. love it. It just really shows how clean, how good of a product you guys produce, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're really proud of the team here. You know, we have so many people that contribute to creating <laughs> Ecotech products. And, you know, without the team, we wouldn't really be able to accomplish this. So it's funny you say that. I've been coming to your facility for many, many years now, and I keep seeing the same faces over and over. You guys are really good at holding your employees. You guys are like a small family, you know? Absolutely. So. It really shows in the product again, you know? We got all the things that come along with the family with that too. Yeah. We're, we're, we're dedicated. We really enjoy, uh, you know, our working environment. We try to make this a really fun place to be. We've got aquariums, you know, we're getting into terrariums and we, maybe we can show you yeah, guys that, some of that. Yeah, sure. Uh, you were telling me something about that and I know Tim, uh, one of your partners is into that. I remember the old facility. Yeah. There's all kinds of cool reptiles. Yeah, we've and got stuff. over 300 reptiles and amphibians and we're oh. breeding them. Interesting. Um, I'm looking forward to see that. Yeah, geckos and chameleons. Oh, for and sure. And it's really, really uh, going to be an interesting product line. And we're going to be bringing all the same types of technologies that we've got for reef aquariums and applying that thought process and technologies for terrariums as well. Cool. I'm excited. Looking forward to see it. So this is like a little array of a demo aquarium. And so we've got all the different products here for app development. And so the engineers can basically control everything with Mobius and then make sure everything's operating in the way it should and creating workflows or shortcuts so that if you want to have different modes or interoperability, we'll be able to accomplish that very effectively. Gotcha. So here we've got some MP60s, I two see. MP60s on a real small tank, huh. two XR30s, right? You guys think this is a bit ridiculous with the sizing bit. of the tank. Um, we've got a Versa and we've got a Vector on the inside. Love it. What about over there with the lights? What are you doing? Look here? at this! Look at this bank of radions here. So, um, this thing draws 220 because the current drawing from the wall is just too big for a normal uh, normal outlet to handle. So, we we give a, a lot of power service to this room so that we can do large scale tests. You guys at Worldwide are running what 300 radions now? Yeah. All on Mobius. How's your experience with that? Loving it. You gotta ask Josh about that because I'm not the one that deals with it, but I yeah. know that we were having issues before Mobius. It was just difficult for so many lights. Well, the ReefLink wasn't ever really designed to handle all those. Too many lights. Yeah. And once we moved into Mobius, uh, it was just a game changer. And that one feature that you guys showed Josh and the crew last month, they yeah. keep bragging about it, they love it. Yeah. What is it called, that feature? Um, so you can create shortcuts and scenes. Yeah, shortcuts, scenes, that's, what it was. Scenes, really. that's what it was. And so if you wanna have a photo scene that you can take photography of your products or of the corals. You can set that up, you can change and tune the, tune the spectrum, and then you can select which lights it'll affect to. At the same time, you can lower the intensity of your pumps or turn your pumps off. So if you want a photo mode, turn your vector off, turn your vortex off, turn your radions to that a- That made our lives so much easier. Yeah. And then it all, all with one button, right? And then you set the timer, so you never forget to turn everything back on. 
you know, and say it comes right 10 back minutes, to boom, back to normal. This is an FDM, and we're making prototypes of aquarium mounting components here. This is a form of 3D prototyping, rapid prototyping. And what do we have here, Pat? All right. This is our uh, office, all of our office team. We've got accounting, supply chain, sales, There's and customer service. There's a whole service. lot of cubicles here. Looks yeah. like 40 cubicles or something like that. How's it going? All right. <laughs> Mike, you coming tomorrow? Yeah. All right, Mike's coming with us, guys. I am in. How many of us are going to be tomorrow, you think? Yeah. How many do you think we're going to be riding tomorrow? Uh, three or four bikes. Four bikes. Four? Three bikes. With three backup, bikes. Wants to ride with bike. a backup. I might jump on one. We got uh, Josh on the quad. Yeah. And then I think we have four side-by-sides. What about Jay? Jay is going to either be on a bike or, or he's probably going to be on a side-by-side. He's probably going to be on a side-by-side. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're just setting this aquarium room, so there's a lot of future work to be done, but we've got the bare bones. Oh, wow, this is cool. Love it. Water box tanks. Yeah, so we just set these tanks up and we're filling them with inhabitants and we're gonna use this room to kind of demonstrate products and show people what you can do with Radeon and Ecotech Vortex. Wow, we're gonna be doing some corals, I heard. Absolutely, worldwide corals. We're gonna be putting in all sorts of, um, I think we might do different tanks and kind of set up some different themes for each one. I love right it, now man. we're just getting the systems established. I love a little room dedicated just for corals. Love it. Cool, can't wait to see it when it's just fun to finish, you know? I hear you guys putting a 300 gallon tank in here. Yeah, house. we're gonna bust a hole in this wall and I th I'd love to have a peninsula tank so we can have people in the shop enjoying. Maybe we can come over and install it for you guys. Yeah, yeah. Enjoying the, uh, the coral room from the, uh, from the outside, too. Cool. We have a, a very extensive quality control system, and we can speak, sneak a little peek into uh, one of the tests that we, fixtures that we use for the Versa. What is this? So we can test about 70 Versas at a time, and so this is how we run and do uh, total lifetime testing on the tubing and we can test all sorts of different parameters. So this is, similar, this is similar to when you, you ever go to Ikea mm -hmm. and they got the little robot banging the little yeah. cushion thing. Like closing the cabinet yeah, door 10,000 like, okay, times. Yeah, like two million times, you know? Right. Same thing you guys are doing, incredible. Yeah, and this is a humidity and temperature controlled environment here, so we can simulate a lot of different conditions. Wow, interesting, I love it, man. They, you guys see, they go above and beyond for everything, guys. All about quality. So what do we have here? All right, this is our uh, machine shop where we do a lot of our prototyping for new products. And sometimes we do production operations as well. So what gets built here? So here we're doing quality control and then we're creating fixtures for the assembly lines as well as sometimes doing operations on parts that need to happen for production. These are our interns for the summer. How are you guys? And uh, so we really need a, a nice group of folks to be able to support all the different aspects that go into running a shop like this. Wow. So this is, uh, we have two CNC, mil CNC mills, a three axis and a five axis CNC mill. And look, Haas team, that's the Formula One team. Yep, all US Haas CNCs. And then over here, um, Doug here is running uh, a test for incoming quality. This is a, called a coordinate measuring system. More quality. <laughs> yeah, lots of steps to this process. So here he's measuring all the different 3D geometries for an AI Nero pump. So this is the Nero 5. And so this machine can come down and it's so incredibly sensitive to, Doug, what's the, what's the fraction of an inch? <clears throat> Uh, we're down in millions. A millionth of an inch accuracy in three dimensions. So he's always touching right around the thing without touching it. Yeah, he's measuring the ceramic shaft there. And you got to do that with each single piece? 
for now until we know more about the parts and then maybe we can go to a sampling. Gotcha. So Interesting. Wow. So a machine like this can measure so many more dimensions and create so much more data than you can with traditional calipers that we really have an idea when we design a part and how that part differs from the actual part yes. post-production. So it gives us an ability and we can give our suppliers a lot more feedback about what needs to change and a lot more control over the quality of every step of production. Uh, you want to talk about these? Yes. All right, man. This, is, uh, this was a top secret project. Um, actually, when we were building this building, um, these are electric go-karts. We may have tried to modify them to double the power, and, and it, it may have gone well. pretty badly. <laughs> so, so they're, they're sitting here in pieces now, but... So they're broken. Yeah, we, were had, we had some good fun. How do you turn? Oh, my Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. This is a joy ride. Not quite the co guards that you have out. And you can now. Uh, he's got a handbrake to slide? Yeah, yeah. Drifting, you see that, Tommy? Tommy's our camera guy. He's into cars too, guys. So we haven't quite unpacked from the All move right. yet. So we're going to go see the museum. Let's go take a, let's go assemble the museum. Let's go. And they're not hurt you? They're not aggressive or anything? No. 